Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 3 from IMC 2023. My emphasis is on thought process behind getting to a solution. So I won't provide you with the solution right away. I will walk you through the thought process that I had and how I ended up with the solution. And then at the end, I will give you a problem from IMO, which is kind of similar to this and uses some of the idea, same, similar ideas. Uh, and I will post the solution to that problem in a few days. Okay, so let's get started. Find all polynomials p in two variables with real coefficients satisfying the identity. So p of x comma y times p of z comma t is equal to p of x z minus y t comma x t plus y z. So I had two different approaches to this problem. The first one was substitute x y z t with some values and then obtain some equality. So that the simplest thing would be to substitute z and t by 0 so that I can kill these four components. So I would get p of x comma y, p of 0 comma 0 is equal to p of 0 comma 0. So the result of that would be two things. Either p of x comma y is equal to 1 or p of 0 comma 0 is equal to 0. So that was the motivation for me to see what are the, all the constant solutions to this equality. So let's say p of x comma y is a constant. So that means c squared is equal to c, which means c is either 0 or 1. So right away, we know that all of the constant functions of the form 0 and 1 are solutions to the polynomial identity. Okay, so let's assume from now on that our polynomial is not constant. So the second thing that we can do is to test this for the different uh, possibilities of p depending on its degree. We already checked the constants. What if p of x comma y is a linear polynomial? Let's see what that gives me. So if I have something like this, then I would get ax plus by times az plus bt is equal to a times, so I had, I believe it was xz minus yt, and then plus b times xt plus yz. Uh, yes, okay, so let's compare the coefficients. Coefficient of xz on the left is a squared. Coefficient of xz on the right is a, so that tells us either a is 0 or a is 1. Coefficient of xt is ab on this side, and coefficient of xt on the right side is b. So that tells you a is 1 or b is 0. If I compare the coefficient of yz, I would get ba on the left, and I would get b on the right, so that's the same thing. And the coefficient of yt on the left is b squared, and on the right is negative a. So this tells me b is either 0 or if I have substitute a by 1, I get plus or minus i. So this gives me that either b and a are both 0, which gives me the original solution of the p of x comma y equals 0, or the other possibility is p of x comma y equals x, coefficient of uh, x is 1, and then plus minus i y. So these are two solutions. In fact, these are solutions to the identity that they gave us, but it's not acceptable because of the fact that the coefficients are not real. Okay, so at this point, I thought about what if I kind of use the same idea that I had in the first uh, approach and try to make these entries zero, but don't like plug in z and t equals zero. There are other possibilities that give me zero and see what those are. So I wanted to make sure that xz minus yt is zero and xt plus yz is also 0. So I wanted to do that. Let's see what we get. We get xz equals yt, and we also get xt equals negative yz. Dividing the two, we get z over t is equal to negative t over z, which means t squared is negative z squared. So you can take t to be plus or minus iz. I'm going to take t equals iz. Let's take that and plug it into equations. We get x times z is equal to y times iz. That gives me x equals iy. Writing down the second component in terms of the first, I would get y equals negative xz. So that means if I substitute y by negative 
x negative i x and t by i z I would end up getting p of 0 comma 0 because again x z minus y t is 0 so x times z is the same as negative i squared z i squared x z and x t x times i i z is equal to negative y times z so that's p of 0 comma 0 which is 0 we already discussed that I'm assuming that p is not a constant so what does that mean it means one of these two polynomials must be 0 since this is true for every x, x and z one of these two polynomials must be 0 so p of x comma negative i x is 0 or p of z comma i z is 0 but notice that the coefficients are real so p of x comma negative i x 0 implies if I take the conjugate of both sides implies p of x comma i x is also 0 and vice versa so that means both of these must be 0 so therefore p of x comma i x and p of x comma negative i x are both 0 so what does that mean? It means the polynomial has a factor of y minus ix and also has a factor of y plus ix. So if p is not constant, then I would have p of x comma y is equal to, I have a factor of y minus ix and I have a factor of y plus ix from that polynomial okay so I would get this but this is just clearly x squared plus y squared times q of x y and of course q of x y is another polynomial with real coefficients now let's take this and plug it into the identity that they gave us x squared plus y squared q of x y z squared plus t squared q of z t is equal to x z minus y t squared plus so that's what they gave us they gave us x z minus y t and then x t plus y z so this times q of x z minus y t comma x t plus y z but the interesting thing is that this product and this are the exact same thing because if you expand the right side you get x squared z squared plus y squared t squared plus x squared t squared plus y squared z squared the 2xyz t term cancels so what we end up getting is that q is in fact another polynomial satisfying the same identity so what does that mean it means we can repeat the same argument or you can argue by induction and factoring another x squared plus y squared from q so what that means is eventually after you do that you get p of xy is equal to x squared plus y squared to some integer power and then times a constant for some constant c and some positive integer n if p is not constant now if you substitute this p into the identity that they gave us we get c squared equals c which means c is 1 so eventually the answer is p of x y is either 0 or 1 or is x squared plus y squared to the power of n for some positive integer n and that is our final answer so I propose that you now work on this shortlisted problem from the International Math Olympiad and I will post the solution to this problem in a few days and I will see you in the next video